What's up everybody? It's Berg back at you with some more belt talk and today we're going to take a look here at this version of the WWE World Heavyweight title belt. So um, first things I want to mention about this, this was a quote unquote bootleg belt that was uh, delivered to me from Pakistan. So made by a Pakistan maker. We're going to look at the good and the bad of this belt because there are some pros, there are some cons. And uh, then I'm going to let you guys know that this belt will be for sale after this video is posted. So if you're interested in buying this belt, hit me up. I'd be happy to talk with you and see if we can't make a deal. But let's take a peek here at the WWE World Heavyweight Title Belt. First things first, let's get a look at these plates. The main plate depth is very close to 10 millimeters. Um, the side plates... A little bit closer to four millimeters. So heavy plates, definitely, um, I would say, well made plates uh, using the zinc. So, as we take a closer look here at the main plate, we can see at the top we've got the eagle paying homage to the uh, lineage of the WWE title. Lions etched into the side. You see very deep etching, capturing all the floral and vine patterns. Making our way around the plate here, we've got the lion at the bottom, and now, much like a lot of the other bootleg belts, this lion is not as accurate as what we see on like the shop replica or the original version. This looks a little more like maybe a baboon, I've heard people say. As we make our way around though, we'll see that the etching on the other side of the main plate here, still very detailed. We've got the other lion depicted on the right side of the main plate, the floral pattern. And we do see kind of this rope style border that carries around the main plate, as well as around the edge of the main plate. We've got our faux gems that are sitting in here. So these I'm assuming are just plastic. These are not cubic zirconia. But they're all there. So that's what we're looking at. Of course, this belt most notable is the big network logo right in the center. And take a closer look here. Because I did give feedback to the maker already on this, but I thought we had a little bit of a sloppy paint job. And we can see that as we look right down into this area, some of the paint has kind of dripped and run. You know, we've got paint on some of the, uh, the gold latitude, longitude lines here of the globe. So not the best quality paint job in terms of neatness. A little bit sloppy in my opinion. See that over on one of the side plates too. You know, we've got just some excess paint. Could have been a little bit cleaner. Speaking of these side plates, so like I mentioned before, they're about four millimeters thick. And you'll notice something about these. On the back we see that, of course, they're covered by the leather backing. But we didn't see any screws other than the four that hold the posts. We don't see any screws on the front, which tells me that these side plates are not removable. So this belt is not going to be able to have interchangeable side plates. These are permanently WWE side plates. I would also say that this leather on this belt, not the best leather. Pretty stiff. You can see if I hold this one up. It's kind of got a bend from where it was shipped that hasn't worked itself out yet. So it's just very stiff, not as pliable. Not very floppy. And it feels a little thin in my opinion. A little bit thin. Another thing to point out is that the tooling this is not actual tooling. This is stamp work or press work that captures or mimics the design of the tooling on the original belt. 
but this is not hand tooled by any means. That being said, we do have the WWE logo. We do have kind of the, I don't know what you want to call this, crisscross type patterning. And then the clamshell tooling around the border of the plates. We've got the tip on this belt, which does have a metal tip. But something that disappointed me with this belt is that this is not a full tip. Um, it is screwed in, but it's only about a half tip. And what we can see is that our backing is peeling here a little bit. And the cut of the leather to make the tip make the tip fit. Just kind of a rough, rough cut. Not very finished. Yeah, you can see, just looks, looks sloppy, unfinished, not very clean. And that, bu that bugs me. I don't like that. I would have preferred to see this with a full tip with a clean cut of the leather to make sure that everything looked nice and finished. So flip the belt over. Oh, it is a heavy belt. I will tell you that. Another thing to point out that was a bit of a detractor for me as you see this kind of discolored area here on the back of the strap. When this belt came in, if you watched my unboxing video, the tape uh, for the protective packaging that was surrounding the belt, the tape was actually taped right to the backing of this belt. And when I pulled it off, it left a lot of tape residue that I tried to clean off as best I could, but it did kind of leave this discoloration in the back of the strap. You know, the residue feels like it's gone, but visibly we can still see that there was something there so full backing on this belt though covering all of your bolts and screws the backing doesn't feel that bad you know it's pretty soft and smooth which i like that but like we noticed at the uh the end with the belt tip the um the backing was starting to peel over here and i think that's just a result of kind of this sloppy work with the with the tip here trying to make the tip fit so looking at the edges of the belt finished okay this belt is a heavy belt though uh, I didn't weigh it if I had to guesstimate though I bet you were in and around eight pounds on this and that's this main plate obviously very thick so a lot of weight added there if you're just looking to have a belt to add to your collection that's going to sit in a case or on a shelf, this wouldn't be a bad addition. Like I mentioned before, I mean, unless you're up close to really inspect this thing to see some of those, you know, details with the paint like I saw down here or, you know, the detail with the uh, the lion here. If, if you're not going to be up close and looking, this belt looks really nice. I mean, it does exactly what it's intended to do and that serve as a replica for the original that's going to sit and be viewed from afar this isn't something you're going to want to have with you at all the shows or taking to conventions because like i mentioned this the, the strap is fairly stiff we saw we had an issue with a little bit of peeling of the backer back here on the uh, the tip side so this belt probably not going to be the best choice for traveling around with and handling. This is going to be best served sitting on a display, a display shelf where you can admire it from, from a distance. I will be selling this belt. If this is something that you're interested in, by all means, give me a shout. We'll talk prices, see if you've got a good offer, but I'm willing to let this one go. I've never personally been a big fan of this design of the World Heavyweight Championship title belt. And if you're interested, by all means, hit me up. Let's talk about it, see if we can't make a deal. But I wanted to give you guys at least um, a look at, at what we're dealing with here. It's not a bad belt. I'm going to say that right now. It's not a bad belt. If you are somebody who is not <laughs> a belt snob like some of us in the hobby... This is an awesome belt, you know. You're going to be able to impress people with this simply because you've got full metal plates, almost 10 millimeters thick, 4 millimeters on this side. All the gems are there. It's on a real leather strap. It's heavy and from a distance, like I mentioned, sitting on a shelf, not a bad looking belt. It's going to serve its purpose that way. But for now, 
Thanks for checking out this uh, quick video on the World Heavyweight Championship Replica Title Belt.